To begin with then, let's take a tour, a quick tour of all the electronic components that we'll use over the next several lessons. Uh, electronic components always need power, a source of power to turn them on and make them do things. For this, we're just going to try to stick with a standard 9 volt battery as long as possible. They're cheap, easy to find, and quite versatile here. Uh, the connections are kind of awkward on the 9 volt battery, so we have these 9 volt battery clips where you can see one end of them here will clip right onto the 9 volt battery, made to mate on there like that. And the other side, you're just left with the two wires. The red is positive, black is negative. That can be connected directly to your circuit. So this will sort of be our power supply for the circuits that we build. The next thing we have here is sort of a standard light bulb. As you might guess, if current is applied to go through these two terminals right here, the light bulb will light up. It's sort of screwed into a base like that for sort of ease of use here. Uh, but it's sort of a nice system together. It gets a light indicator, depending on what a circuit's going to be doing. Uh, the next thing that we'll have is something called a breadboard. Breadboard is a little perforated board like this, has a lot of holes in there. We'll have a whole video just on how the breadboard works. But in a nutshell, you can take any of the components that you have out, say like a resistor, which I'll talk about in a second, and it just sort of stick right into the holes of the breadboard. So while the breadboard isn't really part of your circuit, it just holds the circuit together and makes for sort of easy assembly and changing. We'll have a buzzer, sort of a little black box here with two wires coming out of it. These two wires are connected to, say, across that 9-volt battery. This will buzz. It's fun to make electronic circuits buzz. It's another type of buzzer here that sort of makes a high pitch beep. Same sort of thing here. You see two leads on the end of the buzzer right here. If sort of a voltage applied across these leads, this thing will sort of make a high pitch squeal. Next thing we have is a funny-looking round disc like this. This is a photoresistor, and it turns out as light hits the surface of this photoresistor here, the resistance across these two leads will vary with light intensity. We'll build some circuits with those. On the topic of resistance, we have these little things sitting around here as well. These are actually resistors. They're easily identified by their sort of two leads, long cylindrical shape here. And if you look very carefully at the body of the resistor, there are these color bands on them. The color bands are indicative of the resistance of the resistor. And what these do here is they just pure and simply impede the flow of electrical circuit, electrical current. We'll talk all about resistors in a later video. We have these other little things called diodes here. Diodes look somewhat like resistors, but there's typically a solid color, and if you look very carefully at them, they have a solid band on one side. Uh, diodes only like to pass current in one direction. These are like a one-dimensional valve for a current. We'll talk about those. And while we said diodes are the things we just put down, it turns out these little things, which everyone has probably seen before, are light-emitting diodes. They behave just like diodes do. That is, they only pass current in one direction, but they also glow or emit light while the current is traveling through them. So we use LEDs quite a bit to make things light up and turn on. This little gadget here is called a thermistor. It's a resistor whose resistance changes with temperature. So see, we already have three types of resistors out already. This was the photocell or photoresistor whose resistance changes with light intensity. This is the thermistor whose resistance changes with temperature. And these are just fixed resistors right here that have a fixed resistance sort of no matter what. They vary somewhat with temperature, but we won't worry too much about that. This is a microphone right here, and technically speaking, the microphone here, this electric microphone, is a different type of microphone that actually its resistance changes with sound intensity. So this is actually another type of resistor. So it's a microphone that you could detect sound. You can speak into it, but its resistance changes as sound hits it. This is an, still another type of resistor here. It's called a potentiometer. Its resistance changes when you turn this knob right here. So this knob changes, and as you do that, the resistance will change across these leads here. We'll have some things to do with potentiometers. And while we're on the topic of the breadboard, which we discussed earlier, of course, we need things sort of the glue of our circuit, which will be these wires here. So there are several styles of wires here. These are kind of nice because they have the metal connector on the end. They have these little rubber things here that you can grab with your hands and put right into the breadboard. They're very comfortable and nice to use. And when they're in, they sort of insulate each other from close by connections. But you can also get yourself sort of a spool of this wire here. I'd recommend 22 gauge wire because that's the kind that fits directly into the breadboards here. And if you sort of cut it and strip some of the rubber away, exposing the conductor as I've done here, these will also go right into the breadboard holes and make a nice uh, strong connection right there. And so I have several different types of wires. And these wiring kits are kind of nice because there are different lengths of these as well. Here's like a long black one here, and I plug the orange one right into the breadboard. So these are the things we'll use to construct our circuits. It's also very convenient to have these little hook leads right here for quick connections here. When you sort of press these with your thumb, you can see a little hook comes out on that side here. And say so you can just grab the end of a component, like a resistor like that, and make sort of a secure temporary connection for quick testing or setup, which is the kind of thing we'll try to do in these videos here. 
And last but not least, we'll have a lot to say about our trusty old voltmeter right here. Now, voltmeters can run anywhere between $5 and $100 here. You don't need anything expensive to get started in electronics. This is one I bought at Harbor Freight Tools for about $5. Home Depot and Walmart sell similar things here. We'll talk, have a whole video all about the meter, but it allows us to measure things like voltage and current very easily. So we'll definitely need a meter, and we definitely want to learn how the meter works. So with that, there's the tour of the electronic equipment we'll be using throughout.